Welcome back to the Healthy Skin Coach Show. I'm Takashi, your host, helping you get clear skin and preaching to the world why food is the ultimate medicine. Today, I'm going to explain what steroid creams do to your skin. Most doctors and dermatologists will just hand you steroid creams like candy for your eczema or psoriasis, and they'll never explain what it actually does to your body. So me, as your healthy skin coach, will tell you exactly what it does. But first, I'm going to plug my website, thehealthyskincoach.com. If you need help with skin, inflammation, or nutrition, book a free appointment with me. So what exactly are steroid creams? Well, they're used to treat skin conditions like psoriasis and eczema and contact dermatitis. And what they do is superficially reduce the inflammation in the skin. But that is your body's natural response to something else, to an antigen, whether that's external or internal from something you ate. They can be prescribed or purchased over the counter depending on their strength. They come in different forms like creams and ointments and gels and solutions. And they're actually classified by how strong they are. And greater the potency of the topical steroid, the greater the risk of side effects. So class one has the highest potency. And some of the brands include clobetasol, halobetasol, difluorosone, and betamethasone. In class two, which is still considered highly potent, we have fluosinonide, halosinonide. In class 3, which is considered potent, we have amisinonide, mometasone, furate, and triamisinolone acetonide, 0.5%, which you probably heard of. I've been prescribed this triamisinolone acetonide so many freaking times in my life, and dermatologists are handing them out like candy without really explaining what it does to the skin or the side effects like thinning of the skin and topical steroid withdrawal if you're taking it for an extended period of time. And I got so fed up with taking this steroid cream. And class four is considered moderately potent. And we also have triamcinolone acetonide 0.1%, which I have a big tube of. And I don't use this shit anymore because food is the ultimate medicine, guys. Not topicals, not drugs. And class 5 is considered somewhat potent and it includes hydrocortisone, which you've probably heard of. And class 6 is considered mild and it also includes hydrocortisone butyrate 0.1%. And class 7 is considered least potent with hydrocortisone 2.5%, which you can get over the counter. So let's dive into what it actually does to the body. What is its mechanism of action? Here's a research study from the University of Aarhus in Denmark titled Topical Cortical Steroids, The Mechanisms of Action. And what it does is cortical steroids are known to stimulate the production of a glycoprotein called lipocortin, which inhibits the activity of phospholipase A2, which releases arachidonic acid, the precursor of prostanoids and leukotrienes. So that's a lot of science, and I will show you the exact graphic of what it does right after this. Cortical steroids inhibit the mRNA responsible for interleukin-1 formation. Interleukin-1 is inflammatory, and that's why these actions on arachidonic acid and interleukin-1 formation produces an anti-inflammatory immunosuppressive effect. So it's actually suppressing your body's natural immune response to something else. Remember guys, your skin condition is more of a gut problem. The foods you are eating is causing inflammation inside the body, which is being reflected in the skin because your immune system is overreacting to that inflammation. And Western medicine focuses on using prescription drugs to suppress your body's natural immune system to reduce the inflammation artificially. My method is using food as the ultimate medicine so you never have that inflammatory response inside which can be reflected on the outside. So here's the graphic of what steroid creams do to the body. So we have various stimuli at the top, which can include membrane perturbation or tissue injury, or in most cases of eczema, 
and psoriasis, it's food, inflammatory foods that increase the activity of phospholipase A2 in the phospholipid membrane, which has a downstream effect of increasing arachidonic acid's effects of increasing leukotrienes and prostaglandins, which are both involved in the immune response and the inflammatory response. And as you can see, the anti-inflammatory effects of glucocorticoids, which are the steroid creams, inhibits the phospholipase A2 activity, which reduces the activity of the arachidonic acid and therefore decreases the activity of leukotrienes and prostaglandins, which again are involved in the inflammatory response. Well, you know what I always say, that food is the ultimate medicine. So instead of artificially reducing inflammation by inhibiting the activity of phospholipus A2, which stems from an outside stimulus and with eczema and psoriasis, it's mostly food related. My method of using food as the ultimate medicine goes upstream and inhibits the stimulus that activates phospholipase A2, as in not eating the inflammatory foods that activate phospholipase A2, which activates arachidonic acid, which produces more leukotrienes and prostaglandins and inflammatory cytokines, which are all involved in immune responses and has inflammatory effects on the body and on the skin. So leukotrienes and prostaglandins are really interesting in the inflammatory process. Basically, having a normal amount helps with the immune response to fight off against bad viruses and bacteria and pathogens. But what happens is when you constantly eat inflammatory foods, you're building up more inflammation inside the body. And that can result in too much of leukotrienes and too much of prostaglandins inside the body, which has very negative side effects. And I will explain some of them right now. So having too much of leukotrienes is involved in asthma, in allergies, in eczema, in heart disease, in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, in metabolic disorders, in cancer, leukotriene B4 levels are increased in human colon and prostate cancer tissues, in rheumatoid arthritis, in neurodegenerative diseases, in stomach pain, in pain sensitivity, and lung tissue scarring. So the takeaway is leukotrienes are compounds made from arachidonic acid, which activate the immune and inflammatory responses. They are required for healthy immune reactions to pathogenic microbes, and they attract and activate white blood cells to prevent and resolve disease. Too much of leukotrienes promotes an unhealthy inflammatory reaction People with asthma, allergies, heart disease, metabolic disorders, and other inflammatory conditions tend to have higher levels of leukotrienes than healthy individuals. Leukotrienes may also increase sensitivity to pain and promote bone loss. Now, prostaglandins have a very similar story. A normal amount protects the gut and fights against ulcers. It protects the heart and calms allergies and may improve sperm function but too much have been linked to all kinds of medical conditions, including allergies and cancer. And it's been linked to migraines and headaches and menstrual cramps and celiac disease and ALS and deformity of nails and fingers and depression. In a study of 30 depressed patients, all but one of them had increased PGE2 levels, which is prostaglandin E2. There are different types of prostaglandins. And PGE2 levels were five times higher in the brains of seven Alzheimer's patients compared to seven healthy individuals of the same age. It's also been linked to kidney failure and schizophrenia. So my overall message is for you to not depend on steroid creams 
but instead go upstream and reduce the stimulus. In this case, eat anti-inflammatory foods. So you can inhibit phospholipids A2, which reduces arachidonic acid, which reduces leukotrienes and prostaglandins, which have been linked to so many medical conditions, including deadly cancers. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you need help with your skin, with inflammation, or with nutrition, book a free appointment with me. Please subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment if you are taking any medications and you have questions on what they do to the body. All right, please stay safe and please stay inside. As always, taco is out.